Welcome to Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association. You can find us at lcara.net, on Facebook, on YouTube, and on Instagram. If you're enjoying the videos we're producing here at Elcara, please help our club out by hitting that subscribe button. Also, give us some feedback on our videos. Click the like button, share with anybody who may find it interesting, and be sure and hit the bell icon to make sure you get notified of the next video release. Well, welcome back to Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association's uh, video series on YouTube. Today I'm working with a product that I saw down at Hamcation in Orlando, Florida. By the way, I'm KY4BDP Brian. So what, are the, what did I see and why am I doing a video on it? Well, one of the things that uh, is starting to become more and more popular, uh, at least for me, I'm sure they've been around for quite some time, are masts that you can use in a permanent to semi-permanent situation. Uh, easy to break down kind of mast. Now, I've had a mast with uh, my soda beams uh, uh, antenna for quite some time that I've used at hotels on the air and some other things. And it's, it's fine. You just pull it out and you tighten by going up and twisting. Occasionally those segments come loose. You might not have twisted it well. They're a little bit wet or have a little bit of condensation on them and uh, it works okay. Well, I saw a mast down at Hamcation and thought, you know, I'm going to give that a try and Based on the uh, results that we got from the linked dipole project, I thought, well, why not buy uh, some parts and why not build my own linked dipole and put up a semi-permanent installation in my backyard here on the compound. And so that's what I'm going to do. So in the next segment, I'm going to get out the mast and kind of show you what we're looking at. It's a fiberglass mast, show you some of the clamps and things that comes with it. This is from DX Engineering. It's the 25-foot uh, version and I'll be right back to show you that mast. All right, so let's get started looking at some of the parts that come with this mast. First, I got a bag of clamps, and if you look closely enough, you'll see that uh, they're different sizes, which makes sense because the diameter of the fiberglass uh, poles that go one within the other are also going to be different uh, diameters. So you get a number of these clamps. You can see the clamp there, and you can see how to close it and that would be on one of the larger sections I'm guessing and then inside here there's some of the smaller ones so you got a smaller clamp here see what that looks like and what we'll do is as you're starting to put up the mast you want to put these clamps on now what they recommend is about three or four inches always remains in the previous section to give you that kind of stability so we will uh, get started with that here in the next section oh and before I go to the next section what about the uh, fiberglass part. Well, that comes in this tube, um, a little over three feet, I'm guessing, somewhere in that ballpark, and uh, we'll take off one of the caps. Now, these caps come off easily. This is not inconsequential. This is uh, for permanent to semi-permanent installation, so the fiberglass and the weight of this is quite good, uh, or quite a lot, let's put it that way. So I'm going to pull out the, uh, the innermost tube here. You can see this will come all the way out, all right? So we've got that going for us. And then what we'll do is we'll start putting the clamp. So we'll measure four inches on these, mark that, and then put on a clamp. And the clamp will basically permanently install at that level. And then we'll raise it up to fit what we need. So that'll be in the next segment. Stand by. Okay, so what I've done is taken the smallest segment out from the center core. Um, this will be our topmost part, and one of the other reasons why I got this, because I saw this at Hamcation, look how nice and structured this is. This is not going to lean over once you attach something like a dipole. So this is what gives it that extra rigidity. The pole that I've got, uh, that I've been using, uh, I don't use all of the segments because it would bend over at the very top. And uh, for the soda beams that I've used in the past, they really don't recommend it much past uh, 21 feet because that's what gives the best standing wave ratio from top to the ground. Uh, once it's deployed. So I'm going to have a similar situation when I build my link dipole out of the parts that I've ordered and I wanted something nice and sturdy and this is the top segment. There isn't anything beyond this and uh, they give us a nice cap so that we don't get water down the center as well. So the next step is to measure four inches so that we get an idea of where the collar is going to be. So I've brought out my trusty Sharpie, uh, not sponsored by these folks by the way, and 
in the bag comes a nice Allen wrench. Now, most of you have been to Harbor Freight, and you've probably got a nice set of these. They do provide one if you didn't have one, which is kind of nice. And then we'll take this collar. This is the smallest collar that they have in the uh, materials. And what we'll do is we'll slide it on. And this larger part of the car collar, we're actually going to permanently tighten down. And then we'll use the top part of the car collar as a way to adjust the length here. So um, uh, we'll tighten this down. It won't be completely tight because we want the rod to go back and forth. We'll use this guy right here. We'll tighten this down a little bit, but we'll use the one with the lever, the lever, for those of you in a uh, country other than the U.S. Uh, we'll tighten this down so that we can actually clamp it and it's not going to go anywhere. So uh, let's go ahead and measure and get that started. And just like that, for a non-tool person, I got it marked. I know, it's not that hard. And so the next piece is to bring the collar down. Now what we want to do is tighten the larger part of the collar. It's pretty loose at the moment. We want to tighten that down a bit. We don't want to tighten it too much, but we want to tighten it down enough to where the uh, rod can still go through, the fiberglass pole can go through, um, but uh, give it a nice sleeve, so to speak, to go up and down in. So we're going to tighten these down as well. This is going to take a while, so we'll add some music and speed this up a little bit. Alrighty, so I've got the first larger portion of the clamp tightened down, but you can see we can still move it. So that's the key thing. If I ever need to take this down, reposition it someplace else, I can by just collapsing it as much as possible. So the next piece is the small part right here. So once again, we'll speed this up a little bit and bring you back. Okay, so back from the music. I've got the collar down to the four inch line. I've tightened that and there's an inner sleeve or an inner um, compression area that gives it a little bit of, of uh, resistance. But once I do the lever, the lever, this thing's not going anywhere. So I've been testing that a little bit just to make sure. So our first one is done. So what we'll do is we'll do the rest of these. Again, I'll speed up the video a little bit here and uh, we'll do the rest of these. And then I'll bring you back once we have this ready to go.
And there you have it. What I've gone ahead and done is mark these as well so I don't stick them too far down, but that'll be a, kind of a starting point. All I have to do is unlock these uh, to project them out. So in our next segment, I'm going to take you down into the yard. We're going to remove the bird feeder on top of a pole we already have down there, and then we're going to put this over it, and we're going to see how it sits. Uh, we've got the cap. No water is going to get in much, uh, and uh, there could be a little bit of leakage. I'm thinking maybe in and around, but we've got a nice little flower bed down there, so I don't think it's going, it's not going to rust. It's fiberglass. So I'll meet you down in the yard here in the next segment, but See, not much at all. It's, it's repeat, and, uh, repeat the process on one, two, three, four, five, six segments. All right, welcome back to the compound. So we're in the middle of the backyard. This flower bed is just about equidistant from the two fences. So I'm laterally going to uh, do the link dipole in these two directions. I just have to make sure that when I put it up, it's tall enough for being able to mow the grass and so forth. But we've had this bird feeder location since we bought the house nearly 10 years ago. Well, over 10 years ago now, 12 years ago. In any event, it's always been used for a bird feeder. And we always liked the bird feeder when we first moved in. In fact, our boxer, who's roaming around here someplace, when the squirrels were tried to uh, steal from this feeder, he would chase those squirrels and in fact caught one or two. He, and we had another boxer, uh, he and she, uh, uh, caught uh, one or two in the backyard back in the day. He's too old for that now. So we haven't really been putting any feed in this. And I got to thinking, well, how could I repurpose this pole? Because the last time I looked at this, this is really in some deep concrete, probably about 10 inches, probably about eight inches in diameter. So it's not going anywhere. And I thought, man, this would be a great location to put my next antenna, uh, a dipole that I'm gonna build. We had such great luck with the dipole uh, project that we uh, posted earlier that I thought I'm going to build one for myself and make it a semi-permanent installation for 80, 40, 20, and 10 meters. I may even add something in there uh, because with the links you can add as many of those segments as you like. So this should be a relatively straightforward process. Now this is about the same diameter as this last segment so it's not going to fit over that and the second to last segment I don't know. I don't know if it'll fit the inside diameter of that or not, but what we do know is even if it doesn't, uh, I'll just be able to extend it, uh, but it'll be partially extended regardless. So let's put it on top. Yep, you can already see it's pushing that one to the top. So all I have to do is pull this collar down, and then what we want to do is extend it, in this case, to the black line that I've got. There we go bring the collar down to there. Well, before I do that, in fact, I'll do the top one. But uh, you can see that's not going to be too difficult. Now, the top one here, I need to make sure that we get this up as far as we can because ultimately, this is going to be at the very top, so I need to do it first. The other thing is that I'm 6'2", so I can reach this, but <laughs> it's not going to be that simple for others. Uh, I'm just seeing where my line is. There we go. So we'll bring the collar down one more time so that we get that four inches on the inside. It's not going to go anywhere. And then from here, we just need to raise it until we get our black line down this way. Keep bringing our collar down. And I, should, I probably will mark this all the way around. There we go. And lock it. And we're done once again. And we're just going to keep going up. So we'll put this back in, bring the collar up, let the collar go down. There we go. Let the collar go down. Come on, you can do it. <laughs> and what I did was I let it go too far down. That's all right. There we go. So now we just start lengthening this one, bringing the collar down bit by bit. And it's already getting up there pretty good ways. And I've already got my black line. So bring the collar down some more. About right there. Click it, and that one's done. All right, undo, bring the collar down, just like we did. A couple of these are a little bit tighter than the original, but uh, the first one that I did, but that's okay. Uh, I didn't an anticipate, or I anticipated actually, that they probably, a couple of these would be a little bit tighter than the others. That one's done. I'm just looking up to see how tall this is. Remember, this is 25 feet, I think, at four inches. So when I do my link dipole, I'll have to take that into account as I do my SWR checks. This will be a little bit taller than the one we built in the video. And uh, we uh, loosen that, 
Let's see if we can get the next segment to go down. There we go. And I'm sure because this is brand spanking new that over time this might loosen up a little bit. But keep in mind it's semi-permanent, so not too worried about that. A oh, little too far. You do want to see these kinds of things on camera. Not everything goes 100% all the time. <laughs> Let's get it seated again. And let me turn it where I can see the line I drew. There we go. And now we bring the collar down. Right there. And then there's one more. And we're all the way, we're up there pretty good already. So this one's a little bit simpler, so a little bit easier to do. Make sure I don't go too far. I don't know I could hold it. This is again, not light. So I'm being careful this last segment, <laughs> unlike the previous one, to make sure I don't go too high. And we've got it. So let's step away a little bit. We can kind of see how it is. Now, I might stake this a little bit even then because it is up there and it is heavy. And over time, you can imagine that this is actually going to uh, lean a little bit. And my yard actually leans as well. So if I go that way with it, maybe get a couple of guy lines into the corner of the flower bed or just outside, that'll keep it more or less vertical. And then once the die pulls up there, it's gonna hang back over to the deck and into the house. So a fiberglass mast. Uh, Saw it at Hamcation. Uh, looked it up on DX Engineering. This is the 25 foot mast. And again, I probably won't use all of that height. Um, the dipole that we used was at 21 feet, thereabouts. And so I might use this pretty close to the height that it's at right now. But semi-permanent, gonna weather nicely, and it's hopefully gonna give me great reception on however many bands I choose to use on that link dipole. So, for Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association, I'm KY4BDP. I hope you enjoy these kinds of videos because we want to give you an idea of all the different variations you have when deploying your antennas. And if you've got a similar situation, why not do this? 73s.